Hello, and thank you all for joining us, and welcome to today's keynote, Ahead in the Clouds, the Power of Infrastructure as a Service. I would like to introduce the CTO of Amazon.com, Werner Vogels. Thank you, Stacey. Hi, uh, this is Werner, and uh, welcome to uh, this session. Um, I'm going to have two goals with this uh, presentation. Uh, this, uh, on one hand, I want to show to you guys that uh, cloud computing is a reality today and that you can start using these services immediately. And I'm going to do that at, uh, by using examples from any of the customers that are using Amazon Web Services. And, and the second goal I have is actually uh, giving you guys some background on why Amazon started to build these services for themselves and how that resulted in the, uh, in the services that, we've, uh, that we're delivering. So let's start off with um, the first customer. Uh, so this is an example of uh, the NASDAQ. Uh, the NASDAQ had a particular, uh, I won't say problem, but they had an opportunity. Um, they have a data division that keeps track of all the put and gets that has been done over time. And uh, frequently they would get calls from their customers asking them about whether they could uh, look back in time at a particular date, say September 20th of last year, and if at 3 o'clock they could look at uh, the particular ticker symbol uh, that is at Amazon. And to be able to do that, the NASDAQ would have to do a very expensive ad hoc query against a massive database. And when they, uh, when they would have done that, they would come back to the customer and give them those results. And the customer said, yeah, well, you know, I like that. But that actually what I really meant was 20 seconds before that, can you give us more of those data? And so they would get this request a few times a week, and, and having the idea that this may actually be a, a, a valid application or a valid, valid service that they could tell to their customers, but they weren't really sure about that. And so they wanted to really innovate and build a new product, but they didn't really want to invest in any resources to, uh, to get this application off the ground, because if there wasn't a real market for it, they wouldn't have lost that much. Um, so what they decided to do was to actually split the data stream um, that they have for all their ticket symbols into two, one that would go to the traditional database, and the other one would store all ticket symbols um, in 10-minute time periods in Amazon S3, uh, the storage service in the cloud that Amazon offers. And they also took a whole range of flash components that they have for use on their website and uh, turned that into, uh, into a desktop uh, flash app using Adobe Air. So it meant that on the storage side, they had made no investment because the only thing that they were doing was storing things in Amazon S3 and, to be honest, uh, ticket symbol data in, in plain text in S3 isn't that much data, so the costs were, so were relatively low. And they weren't using any server uh, processing components because now there's also a desktop app that will be running on people's desktops. Um, and this is an app that you can actually download from uh, data.nasdaq.com, uh, and you can start immediately start using that. Um, it turned out that the application is actually uh, uh, rather successful, and, uh, but if, if it wouldn't have been, then they would have had minimal investment to actually get this, uh, get this off the ground. So that brings us actually to, to the main point there already. If you look at the cost savings part of, uh, of cloud computing, you will see that there is a shift from a capital expense, you know, the amount of money that you need up front to get either a new product off the ground or um, to do some innovation to a variable cost. And if you've built your application such that, um, you know, your income for your application will, sh will scale among the same lines that you have to scale up your resources, you know, you, you find a, a, a perfect balance between the cost that you actually have to, have to pay and the income that you're getting. Um, you know, it may seem that, uh, let's, let's roll on back actually here, slide number four, yeah. Um, so it may seem that this idea around, you know, reducing capital uh, expense is something that has been driven by how, how the economic downturn happened at the end of last year, but this is actually a pattern that has been going on for, you know, I would like to say the last 10, 15 years. There's a, there's a great paper by John Hagel and John C. Brown, uh, it's called From Push to Pool, Emerging Models for Mobilizing Resources, 
that demonstrates that most of these moves from um, are already going on for 10 to 15 years. And not only in the computer industry, although we like to think that the whole services model originated there, you can see the same.